today we're going to be talking about the four things that you need to focus on to have more energy in your life. Today, we're going to be diving into the four things that you need to focus on to have more energy in your life. And what we're actually going to be talking about are the four things that you want to pay attention to and also avoid so that you have more energy in your life. Because ultimately, a lot of times what we look at are the four things that we need to focus on to have more energy, not thinking about the things that actually steal energy away from us. So let's dive into it. The first thing that's kind of odd that most people don't pay attention to that steals energy from them, that drains them or can give them energy is the music that you listen to. The music that you listen to. Ultimately, what is music? Music is sound in words. At its simplest form, it's sound in its words. Sound is just a vibration that's traveling through the air. That vibration goes into your eardrums and then obviously it's vibrating into your body. And so what most people don't think about is that our bodies are actual vibrating pieces of machinery. We are all vibrating. If you were to zoom into our hands and look at them under a microscope, if it was possible, you would see that you were in constant vibration. So the music that you're listening to actually changes the frequency or the vibration that your body is at. And when you think about the sound, also think about the words that go with it as well. Words, when you say them out loud or you say them in your head are all affirmations, whether that's a positive affirmation or whether that's a negative affirmation. And so you got to start thinking to yourself, the music that I'm listening to, is it uplifting? Is it inspiring? Do I feel better after listening to it? Or is it aggressive? Is it mean? Is it nasty? Do I feel worse after listening to it? The words that I'm saying inside of this that I'm singing out loud to myself, is it, you know, the type of future that I want? Is it the way that I want to treat people? You know, the other day we were driving, we were listening to Kanye and I was like, what the hell is this music? Like, I love the beat. I love the way that it sounds. But when you listen to the words, I was like, this just isn't something like this isn't the thing that I would walk around and say to myself. Or if I was in the middle of a meditation, I would repeat these things to myself. And so there's certain music that you might listen to that you might not even be realizing are actually draining your energy. They're actually sucking the energy out of you. So think about it. The sound, the music, the frequency the music is at, in the words, the affirmations that you're singing in your head over and over and over again, or you're singing out loud. Think about it. You know, everything is an affirmation, whether it's, you know, a positive affirmation, you know, I am getting better every single day. I am attracting more wealth into my life. I am attracting the perfect partner or spouse or whatever it is, or any of the negative stuff that you could say. And when you listen to music, what happens? It usually gets stuck inside of your head. And so if you're repeating these things over and over and over and over and over again, ask yourself this question, is this the type of stuff that I actually want to repeating, be repeating and programming into my subconscious? Because something that's repeated through repetition over and over and over again is programming your subconscious. So is the music that you're listening to, is it programming your subconscious the way that you want to? Is it giving you energy or is it draining you from energy? The second thing, that will either give you energy or suck energy from you are the people that you spend time with. And this is important because we've all heard the phrase, your network will determine your net worth. You know, if they say that if pay attention to the five people that you spend the most time with. If you look around you and you see the five people that you spend the most time with, what are they like? Do they have, are they, are they on the journey with you to create a better future? When you look and fast forward three, four, five years, do you want to be in the same circumstances of those people where they are in three, four, five years? Because ultimately, if you hang out with five millionaires, you're probably going to be the six. If you hang out with five alcoholics, you're probably going to be the six. If you hang out with five overweight people, you're probably going to be the six. If you hang out with five extremely healthy people, you're probably going to be the six. So what are the people that you surround yourself like? Are they motivating to you? Do they inspire you? Do they help you celebrate your wins and your successes? Or do they talk down to you? Do they make fun of you? Do they make you feel worse about your successes? Whenever you come to them with something really exciting that happened to your life, do they celebrate with you? And are they truly happy for you? Or are they trying to poke holes into your wins? Think about that. And what you have to realize is that there might be some people that are in your top five. You don't have to get rid of them and never see them again. 
but maybe you spend less time with them and you think, all right, this person is actually, you know, kind of demotivating. They don't seem like they're going on the path that I really want to be going on. If I were to fast forward their life in three to five years, I probably don't want to be in the circumstance that they are in three to five years. So maybe I spend less time with them and I replace them and spend more time with someone who's an acquaintance that I need to develop a deeper relationship with. Or maybe I spend time and go out and try to find a mentor that I can spend more time with. Or maybe I have someone who's already in my top five that's super inspiring that I want to spend more time with and develop a deeper relationship with. So something that can actually give you more energy or take energy from you are the people that you spend the most time with. I always say that people can either be batteries or they can be black holes. Batteries, they can give you more energy. You can hang out with them. You can feel inspired. You can feel excited. You can leave their house and be like, I'm going to go take on the world. Now I want to go work out. Now I want to build that business. Now I want to go make more money. Now I want to impact the world. Or you can be around someone for 15 minutes and you're like, holy crap, I need a nap. Those are the black holes. And so the people that you surround yourself with, start to categorize them. Is this person more of a battery or are they more of a black hole? Because ultimately, the people that you spend the most time with are going to dictate the energy that you have throughout the day. That's number two. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. It helps with the YouTube algorithm so that more people can see this message because it helps us get it out organically. So hit that like button and I appreciate you. The, set, uh, the, the third thing that actually gets into your subconscious that you might not be spending a whole lot of time thinking about are all of the advertisements and the commercials that you see and hear and read every single day. You know, if you're watching TV and you happen to see an ad that pops up and you're not even paying much attention to the ad, but it says, hey, you know, do you ever feel tired at 4 p.m.? And you're like, oh my God, yeah, of course I feel tired at 4 p.m. Because we all know those big pharma ads that ask you the most generic questions. You know, do you ever go pee once a day? Oh shit, yes I do. Something wrong with me? Right, you gotta start thinking about that. And they're like, well, if you go, you know, have to go pee more than two times in a day or you have to take a nap at four o'clock, you might have X, Y, Z. And you hear that and that goes into your subconscious. Now your subconscious starts to think, maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe I do have this disease. Maybe I do have this disorder. And you have to be very, very, uh, conscious of what you let into your ears, what you let into your eyes, what you let into your mind, because ultimately everything comes in through to your subconscious, from your conscious mind to your consciousness. And then it's not, it's automatically stored away as true. There's no part of your subconscious mind that says, is this true? Is this not true? It's like a filing cabinet. It just stores it all away. And so you have to think of the ads that pop up when you're driving the billboards that you see, the magazines that you read. When you're reading magazines and you're looking at Cosmo and seeing all of the fit women and you're looking at yourself and you're like, oh my God, I don't look anything like them. I'm fat. I'm ugly. They're so much prettier than me. They have so, many, uh, so, many, so much beautiful skin. My skin has issues. And then you start thinking, oh my gosh, these advertisements of these perfect, quote unquote, perfect people who are just all photoshopped makes me feel worse about myself. Maybe I should stop reading that magazine. Maybe I should stop going on that website. Hell, Maybe I should stop following most of the people that I follow on Instagram that are all just completely photoshopped that make me feel worse about myself. So start paying attention to those because if you look at something that's an advertisement or somebody that's on Instagram and you look at them and you're like, oh, I wish I had her body. And you look at them, now you start to feel worse about yourself. That that you just said in your head was an affirmation. It was a negative affirmation. It's going to be repeated and it's going to go from your, your conscious mind to your subconscious mind and stored. And now your subconscious mind just assumes that you have a terrible body or assumes that you have terrible skin or assumes that you're not good enough or smart enough or pretty enough or worthy of love. Whatever it is, you have to be very cognizant of what's going into your mind. So the ads that you see, the people that you follow on Instagram, the, you know, the places that you hang out that, that you normally shop at and you see the ads that they have, you have to really, really pay attention to some of those. And the good thing about when you're on Facebook or Instagram and you get hit with an ad, you can always report the ad and say, you know, this is inappropriate. This is not for me. So they don't show you those types of ads again. So you have to be very clear of those. Also, when you're watching TV, like I said, the ads that you're seeing there. If you're watching TV and you're seeing ad after ad after ad after ad after ad, maybe it's time for you to turn the TV off and open a book because the book's not going to have advertisements inside of it. Maybe you should start thinking about, oh man, I spend too much time watching TV and now with all that, that TV I've been watching, but hit with ads after ads after ads after ads after ads. We were watching TV for the first time in the longest time because we don't, you know, we watch Netflix and so there are no commercials that pop up. And we were surprised that there's literally 
we were watching Shark Tank. It was like every other minute, it seemed like we were getting hit with ads and ads and ads and ads. And you know, it's like a, a 30 minute show is actually only 22 minutes. So there's eight minutes of ads. Almost a third of what we're watching is just advertisements. And so you have to be very clear on the ads that you see and if they're the ads that you want to be seeing, or if you should divert your energy and your focus into something else because it can make you feel like something's wrong with you. So that's number three. And the fourth thing, which is very, very common for people to think about, but then also forget about, is the food that you eat. What type of food are you eating throughout the day? The one thing that I try to pay attention to is after I eat, every single time that I eat, I ask myself, how do I feel about an hour later? And that will give me a pretty good idea of if I should ever eat that thing again or not. Because ultimately what I know is this, we have 24 hours in the day. Everybody has 24 hours in the day. And if I'm tired most of the day because of the food that I'm eating, I need to change the food that I'm eating because billionaires and bums all get 24 hours. And if I'm going through my day at 60% energy, 75% energy, it's not enough to create the life that I want. And so then I'm going to look at it and say, okay, you know, what people am I spending time with? What music am I listening to? What ads am I getting hit with? Who am I following on Instagram? You know, what food have I been eating that all of these things can be draining the energy out of me? Because ultimately with the amount of time that we're given, we're only awake for about 16 hours a day. I want to make sure for me that I can be as productive as possible because it's not about being busy. It's about being productive. And if the food that I'm eating is starting to make me feel worse, it's got to go. Sure, of course, I would love to have a big fat burger every single day covered in bacon, you know, but I don't eat those things anymore because they literally drain energy out of my body because the most energy consuming thing that your body does is digestion. So if you're eating something that's big and heavy in the middle of the day, you're going to get really tired. You're going to feel like you need a nap. If you're having too much sugar throughout the day and you get a massive spike in your blood sugar, it's going to drop. And when it drops, watch out because you're going to feel like you need a nap. You're going to feel like you need a five hour energy. You're going to feel like you need a coffee. And that is not the type of energy that you want to have. So you got to be very clear of the food that you're eating. Are you eating something greasy? Are you eating something with a lot of fat? Are you eating something with a lot of that, that's really thick and, and hearty so that therefore it takes a lot for your body to digest it because your body will focus on shutting everything else down, which is why if you have a big, huge meal, you literally feel like you have to take a nap is because your body's like, all right, shut it all down. We got to digest because it is the most energy consuming thing that your body does. So the four things that can either give you energy throughout the day or strip energy away from you are this. Number one, the music that you listen to, the sounds and the words and the affirmations that you use by listening to that music. Number two are the people that you spend time with. They can either be batteries or they can be black holes. Number three, the ads that you see throughout the day, whether that's on Instagram or Facebook or the magazines that you read or listening to the radio or watching TV. Or number four, the food that you eat. So those are the four things that I would focus on. And if you really, really want to get in depth and figure out how to make your energy better, this is what I recommend to people. Set an alarm in your phone every single hour for the next week. Take a log. And what I want you to do is on a scale of one to 10. So from seven to eight o'clock, you wake up eight o'clock, your phone goes off. You're going to rate from one to 10 what your energy was like. One to 10, one being super low, 10 being extremely high, the highest that it could be. Then from eight to nine, nine o'clock, your phone goes off. You're going to go, oh, I need to log my energy on a scale of one to 10, nine to 10. You log your energy and you go on and on and on and on. And what you look at is you start to notice there's fluctuations in your energy. And then you go, man, was there something that I ate? Was there someone that I hung out with? Did I start thinking negatively myself? Was there music that I was listening to that either gave me energy or took energy away from me? And you start to realize there's certain times of the day when you have more energy. There's certain times of the day where you have less energy. There's certain foods that you eat that strip energy away from you. And if you really take this serious and log it every single hour for the next seven days, you'll notice a massive difference in what you should do throughout your day in order to make sure that you have more energy. So those are the four things that I got for you. Once again, the music that you listen to, the people that you spend the time with, the ads that you see, and the food that you eat. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. If you're listening to this or you're watching this, there's something inside of you that feels that you need more, that, you, that you're, you're destined for more. 
you wouldn't be here if you didn't feel like you were destined for more. So if that's the case, let's be very clear on the stuff that we're putting into our body and how we feel.